Welcome to I'm Not a Fan Unless I Have a Podcast. I'm John Hanford. And uh, before we get into this episode, um, I just wanted to give a little recap on, um, you know, like last week I mentioned that I was going to be in Prescott, Arizona, or I said Prescott. Turns out it's pronounced Prescott. Um, I went there to do stand-up comedy and had a total blast. It was, uh, it's, it's such a cool town. It's like not really the desert. Um, but it because it, it, it's like I think it's like fifty hundred three or fifty three hundred feet elevation, uh, and it's there's like a whole national forest there. Uh, it's a lot of it, it's pretty woodsy. It's like you know somewhere between a forest and a desert. Uh, anyway, beautiful place. Highly recommend it. Um, it's uh, very much open. Masks are you know optional, which isn't ideal. But I had a really good time, and I'm pretty sure I had COVID back in March. So I'm uh, banking on that basically, and, and just overall banking on my immune system. Uh, because my, <laughs> it's more important to me personally, uh, that that people laugh at my jokes, and that I'm able to, you know, go out and make people laugh. Um, so yeah, a little bit selfish, but, uh, you know, getting stir crazy. Uh, I already like nearly had a mental breakdown this summer. So, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to go back to that. I, um, and I think, I think we're all sort of moving past, uh, the being afraid phase. Um, I still fully acknowledge that, uh, you know, doctors probably wouldn't endorse what I, you know, how I'm treating it, but you know, whatever, uh, I'm not perfect and I'm just here to have a good time. Um, and I do wear a mask, so hopefully I'm not spreading shit. Anyway, uh, beyond that, I also, uh, like, after I went to, um, uh, after I, the, the day after I performed, uh, I just hung out in downtown Prescott, and I went to a guitar shop there, Grey Dog Guitars, uh, just to see, you know, what they got. Like, anytime I see a guitar store, I, I will go in. Uh, you know, if it's open and I don't have somewhere to be. Um, and I was just playing around there with, uh, they, they had some really cool, uh, Gretsch guitars that, I mean, there's this one that I played that just played like a dream. Uh, I wish I had more money so I could have bought it, but, um, you know, it's okay. I have two guitars. It's, it works. I don't need a guitar, but I did play through a, um, I, I did try out a pedal, um, from uh, uh, from Earthquaker Devices, it's the levitation pedal. It's a their reverberation machine. Um, it's just like this really dreamy sort of surf sound. Um, I know uh, I'm I'm pretty sure that Christian Bland of the Black Angels uses it. Uh, I mean, a, a lot of a lot of psych bands uh, use that pedal. So I got to play through it, and it was such a like I was just blown away by by the effect that you know that I was able to get from it, uh, that I it, it compelled me to shell out more money than I should, uh, just be willing to drop at any given moment. Um, you know, it was a two hundred dollar pedal, and I it was just a gut instinct thing. I I went with it. Uh, also, the guy who helped me out there, Addison, a uh, really cool dude. Uh, turns out he went on tour with Ty Seagal, like a few years ago. Um, so it, like that was just a whole bunch of, you know, extra cred points. And even beyond that, it was just like, if you're going to go to a guitar shop and try a bunch of shit, you better buy something, you know, I mean, unless it's guitar center, fuck them. But like, <laughs> this is a local business and, you know, local businesses are hurting. Um, and, 
you know, I even feel a little bit guilty for only buying the one Earthquaker Devices pedal, because um, from what I understand, Earthquaker Devices has, uh, um, they have a pretty small, mar pretty small profit margin for the, uh, for retailers. So I would have liked to, you know, have more money go to the local business, but you know, whatever it is, what it is, I bought the pedal at a local shop instead of, you know, just trying it out in the store and then picking it up secondhand on eBay or reverb.com, uh, which is usually how I go about uh, acquiring pedals. Like usually I'll go to Guitar Center uh, and, and, and say, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm looking for, uh, I'm looking to get like a certain sound and, um, and I just want to know what I'm getting myself into. I just want to play around with some stuff and, uh, and, and then I'll be back to pick it up, you know, next week when I get paid. Guys, I don't have a job. Uh, it's a big lie, but it's uh, uh, but it's a great way to um, to try new pedals and to put money back in the pockets of you know musicians uh, rather than just in the in the pockets of the big corporation that is Guitar Center. Fuck them. But when you're in a local place, you know, have some consideration. So I bought that pedal, and it is just amazing. However. Uh, it doesn't, I haven't been able to get it to play very well with my uh, Vox modeling amp. Uh, when I was playing through the, uh, when I was playing in the, in the store, I was playing through a, a Fender, um, I, I think I was playing through a, a Fender Twin Reverb, um, obviously great amp, and, uh, and it sounded better through that. I imagine this pedal would probably sound better through uh, an amp that doesn't have so many different settings on it. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm keeping the pedal because, you know, I, I also have, uh, you know, I have an, another Bogner amp at, at home or at my parents' place that, uh, that doesn't have a whole bunch of extra settings. It's very much like, you know, other than distortion and like, I guess a little bit of reverb and delay. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's, that's what's going on in my business. Um. Let me introduce today's guest. Uh, this episode is going to be a little bit different from all of the others. We're not, because we don't really talk that much about King Gizzard, uh, because my guest on this episode uh, isn't really a fan per se, but he is a good friend of mine. Um, I mean, I consider him a good friend, and, and uh, uh, it'll make more, that'll make more sense as this episode plays out. A lot of ball busting. Um, but my guest today is Elmo Kirkwood. He's uh, uh, one of the, the guitarists. He's a backing guitarist in the Meat Puppets, um, which is his dad's and uncle's band. Um, you know, they've been around since the like early 80s. I've mentioned them countless times on this podcast because they were my favorite band before King Gizzard came along. And uh, it, it was just such a fun conversation to, you know, I mean, hopefully to get you guys to listen to some meat puppets, but also just, it's fun. He's a fun dude to talk to and it's entertaining as hell. Uh, this is one of the better episodes, I think. So um, I hope you all enjoy it. Uh, Elmo has come out with uh, a couple cover tracks of, um, uh, of 80 songs. He did uh, uh, the song We Belong with, with some of his friends and uh, they released out a few weeks ago and uh, one that was just released yesterday. Um, is uh fuck I, f I keep forgetting the name of this let me hang on a second what is it called i know there's something going on um by uh by frida you know from uh from abba so he just came out with that one yesterday and uh yeah check him out on on Bandcamp, on uh soundcloud you know anywhere um and uh yeah i think that's i think that's the intro anyway uh, without further ado, here is Elmo. <laughs> How's it going, dude? Good. Yeah. Um, so th this is uh, th this is kind of a weird episode because because um, typically like I'm just talking about King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard with, <laughs> with like random people all over the world. But um, uh, you know, I figured like that gets kind of stale after a while. So why not? Uh, <laughs> You know, why, why not talk to you? you? You got some new shit coming out, or some that just came out, and uh, it was pretty badass. Hey, hold on. I'm trying to find a way to make you louder on this. So oh. quiet. Uh, let's see. You got any tricks, tough guy? 
Uh, if you have headphones, that look those usually. I work did when well. I have the headphones and I can't sit my phone up and I'd have to hold it the whole time. God oh. forbid. <laughs> uh, you know I, what I'm I mean, saying? Well, yeah. Except like you could turn your phone sideways and then it would. Uh, right. I mean. I had it sideways. Oh no! no hey, now it works. Well, when I had it sideways, you were like, blah, 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 like a big baby. Remember? <laughs> Remember when I tried that already? Hold on. Does that work? Yeah, yeah, it actually does. Uh, I guess it just My didn't. headphones go back in. Hold on. Because <laughs> right now I'm literally just hearing you spit out through the little, you know, spigot of noise. And uh, <laughs> God <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> my, my dog just knocked it over. <laughs> Bruno, get the fuck out all right, here, look, look, we're going to make this happen. I'm going to put this over here, right like this, so you can see my beautiful fat face. <laughs> there go. Let's get this right here. Is that uh, acceptable for you? Yeah, dude, it looks good. Accept- you got some, you got some right, cool good. shit in the background. It looks solid. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Here, check this out. This is why it just fell over, because someone jumped at the back of it, this guy. Awesome. Oh, goodness, he says. So, he Bruno? Says, <laughs> He goes, hello, John Hanford. <laughs> so, so is it uh, gonna? Is it? He's still, hey, dude. Get off! Get, I'm gonna make. I mean, oh shit! He's trying to attack. I gotta get him off the bed. Come here, come here, come here, little guy. There we go. You hang out down there. Hey, seriously, like jumping at the box. He thinks it's a play thing for him. Does it hurt your uh, brand if I use uh, marijuana on your podcast? Uh, uh, not at all. I think that'll. Um, uh, th- yeah, that, that's oh. that's fine. Um, <laughs> oh, I, 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 yeah, I wouldn't dude. expect so, any less. Uh, yeah i've got my coffee set up i've got my weed set up i've been listening to music just like getting myself in the right headspace to talk about myself um <laughs> actually wasn't wasn't very hard it was it was say, say say you're looking to make a change and you shift yourself one degree that's about as much as it took for me to get ready to talk about myself <laughs> I mean, I, th- I think that's good. It's, it's usually an indicator, like you have a pretty good idea of who you are and like what, what you're about. I, you know, it, it's, uh, I don't know, like or I think how I- you, Or how, go ahead, sorry. No, 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 I was just gonna, you know, say some agreeable shit, didn't matter. Uh, <laughs> right, right. And I was gonna say like, or a good way to, a good indicator of how you want people to think you are. So you can kind of curate people's experience of you or try to at least, because that doesn't, typically where people are going to think what they think i guess it depends on the person right some people will buy your shit other people won't other people will misinterpret it it's the fucking crap shoot well i mean exactly like you can only control what you can control and like like at at this point i'm just you know who i am because like being in this element is like what makes me feel most comfortable so you know take (laughs) it or leave it it's uh i'm I'm with you yeah, quarantine has kind of helped me uh, figure that shit out. Or maybe it's just also like turning 30 and just being like, oh, fuck, I'm not a kid anymore. Uh, I'm not a kid anymore. And also, like, your your brand of, like, audaciousness is an interesting one. It, it propels you into places that seem unlikely. But the longer I've known you, it, it is very much like you. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that, and I mean that in a good way. It's just such a trip, like... It's, it's a trip it's a trip dude i, I mean like i mean that, that, that's probably the nicest compliment i've ever received because it's, <laughs> it's like it's, it's really sincere and accurate um <laughs> so I, I appreciate that man um yeah i mean so like i, I guess just to stay on brand with uh, with this podcast to for the beginning um like, like i i think i introduced you to king gizzard um like when we were hiking a couple years ago and i was probably like really insistent that you give it all of your attention and i was probably kind of an annoying cunt about it uh yeah but it was it was good i mean people show me shit all the time and you know i'm whereas i like everything musical i don't really care about anything but every once in a while something is good enough to catch my attention so i did like that stuff and I've heard it a couple more times since. Typically, you will post shit about it, and I'll see it. And I have a couple other friends that like it, but it's good. It's different. Yeah. Well, cool. I, I'm, you know, thanks for being on the podcast, and uh, you know, being more or less like, uh, if not a fan, like, 
net, view it as like a net positive. I don't know how to put it into like a succinct sentence, but I'm an um, appreciator. Yeah. Yeah. You can appreciate. That's cool. I can appreciate. <laughs> um, so, the, so you just came out with a, with a new cover of, uh, 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 uh fuck what, what, it has a really long title and I forgot what it is. Uh, but, but it's, it's, by, it's by Frida. From ABBA. It's, it's, I know there's something going on. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so I have like basically no exposure to eighties pop. Um, yeah. but, but like I, I checked out, you know, I checked out the link, you know, when he sent it to me, uh, last night and then, uh, and then I listened to the original song today and I was like, Oh fuck, that's, uh, you did a great job with that. I, I, I really liked it. Yeah. I wanted to pay homage to how the original song sounded, but kind of cut out some of the tacky shit that I thought was tacky and then put like a real psychedelic guitar solo in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What, what, what kind of effects were you using in the, in that solo? Um, okay, well, to be 100% honest, I just recorded it through my uh, Fender DeVille with my Les Paul and on like a semi kind of like clean but like overdriven channel. And then I just put like effects they had on the recording app. <laughs> I used an app on my phone to make that whole song. So I think it's just like a maybe a phaser and a, a distortion and a delay or something. I have, I have yeah. no idea, man. It's two different guitars too. Like one starts and then they go together. And then when one ends, the second one just carries on the rest of the solo. Cause like I wanted to make it longer. And I was like, well, I'll just have a start at the same time and sound all fucking goobly gobbly and weird. And then let one just keep doing the work after the other one kind of dies off the first one. And, uh, <clears throat> ended up being pretty cool but yeah no it's totally just me faking it i just did the solo without any effects and then put them on afterward to see if it would sound cool because i kind of knew it would um mm -hmm. just because the way i played it i was like what would i do kind of dreamy shit or kind of far out fucking shit and um that's basically me just ripping off my dad so yeah, I was I was gonna say like it, it kind of sounds uh, it it sounded similar to uh, uh, oh, yeah. you know, like just that technique of, of like using dual guitars because at first when I heard it I was, I was thinking like maybe you're using it uh, like an ebo or something you know j just because at, at some point before I, like I didn't realize that there were two guitars playing um, but right. like it, but it was just kind of like just cutting in like really cleanly you know sort of like doing a uh, like like running a tape backwards except. Well, at the very end, like well, but at the very end, actually, the very end of the song, when there's like kind of just guitar leads happening behind stuff, that is reversed guitars from other parts of the lead. So there are parts that are reversed, but there are parts that sound reversed that are not. So I did both. That's sick, man. Um, and, and so, what, which uh, which app are you using? Raj Band, baby. Dude, it is GarageBand such a trip. Like, check it out. I recorded all the guitars through this right here. I just dangle it in front of my Fender DeVille, and I dangle it in front of the sound hole on my acoustics. I did all the vocals through this right here, this mic. And then, I, like, so honestly, I can't believe how clean it ends up sounding, especially if you're like mixing, you know, keeping being mindful of what the fuck you're trying to get sound wise. So I did spend some time on the mix. I didn't want it to be super clean or anything. I wanted it to like be the mix I wanted though. And the only thing I didn't do on the um Garage Band app is that I had Boyer uh master it for me on our real stuff that we have for the he oh, has. Sick. So it got mastered there. So it sounds louder and wider and cleaner and bigger because of that. But all everything else I did myself. Like I mean I can't there's not mastering crap on this that could do it, but all the mixing was done on my phone. I mean, I did everything on my phone. Same with that other stupid cover song. I did a, uh, not <laughs> stupid, but that uh, Pat Benatar song. I just did it all on my phone. I made Brian Dellinger and his sister sing on that one. And I made, <laughs> I made them hold the little microphone. Of the, I was like, no, you got to record the vocals the same way I do. <laughs> but dude, they sound cool as hell. Garage band, whatever, like, you know, however that app is designed, there's some sort of like, it has its own sound, right? And the sound that it captures for you on certain stuff, man, you can manipulate it into some really good sounding crap. I, you know, I don't, that's just what I've been using for years now. I got it just to play around with. And, you know, I do my real stuff with Boyer. 
because uh, we had all the fun toys over there and all the, you know, real crap. But, man, lately I've been having a hell of a time, like, you know, just a blast doing it on the phone. So Yeah, dude. I mean, because, I mean, I th- this is this is pretty wild that I remember this. But, like, what, weren't you featured in, on, like, some sort of, like, top uh, album from, like, 2013 or 2014 that were recorded on an iPhone or something um, in some sort of niche thing? Uh I might be misremembering this completely, but like there was some publication where it's just like, check out Elmo Kirkwood. He's got like, he's doing shit on an iPhone and it sounds pretty okay. So- I don't know if I, I don't know if it was like a list of things, but I did get a, a pretty much a whole article written about these songs that um, I had done on the iPhone when I first started doing it. This was five years ago or something, maybe more, yeah. six, six years ago. Um, and that's when I first made whole songs on it, not just little cute demos or beats or loops or samples or whatever. And those sounded like shit. The songs were awesome. There was a lot of cool parts of just the mixing capabilities on the app weren't there yet. They didn't have really the same shit they have now. So it was a lot of hit and miss stuff there. Now I can make the stuff sound cleaner. But yeah, I've been doing it for years. And it's funny that I've been working on a solo EP of like, you know, original material. And that's all done like with real stuff. But here I am again. The first stuff I've released in a long time is back on the phone. So yeah, well, but it's it's, it's good. It's, if it, go ahead. No, 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 no. We're, we're, you can finish up the thought. It, well, it's just like getting my sea legs back. You know what I mean? Before I go and try to release real crap, it's like let's do some covers. And before we put out this like stuff that sounds really, really nice, let's try to get as good of a product as we can out of this old method we used to do. I don't know. I just. I've been a slug for a while when it comes to doing my own stuff and um, pulling myself out of the dirt has been a fun process and I've liked the way I've gone about it. So doing cover songs of like 80s stuff that I like a lot. These songs came out when I was a baby or not even born. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't, I just, stuff I heard on the radio in high school a lot when I'd listen to like Mix 96.9. They played a bunch of 80s crap and I would just like be like, damn, this song's fucking sick. Yeah. I, I mean, because like they're, because like the, the 80s sound is objectively pretty badass. Like it's pretty cool. It's totally different, but it just it got rules. kind of like overexposed by a hair metal. Um, but I mean, well, yeah, like, that, that crap ruined it, but everything else was, what about Duran Duran sounds great. Uh, yeah, you know, it's I mean, a bunch of cool stuff. I, I mean, Prince. one of my favorite, yeah, I mean, parents obviously but like you know one of my favorite iggy pop albums uh blah 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 like that was so you know super 80s um and and it had just like that cool you know uh i, I forget what the effect is with with the snare drum but uh, <laughs> uh the gate with the gated reverb yeah yeah <laughs> yeah no that shit's fun yeah. dude um, i uh yeah i love it i think the 80s is so rich musically because people oh 80s music this that the other but all the indie music that came out in the 80s is sick. What about like the Minutemen and Black Flag? Yeah. And the Meat Puppets. And then even like some of the stuff that was on the radio, like the guitar player from Moingo Boingo is sick. Um, there's just a bunch of cool crap. Like, I love it. I don't know. And there's just like, a, like you might not care for the production, but some of the songs behind there are just so pretty. I, I, I just like it. I always have. So that's why I did a couple 80s covers. And I'll probably do a couple 80s covers more just for the hell of it because – I already started another one before I did this last one, actually. I got, like, the whole afternoon into programming the drums and getting the acoustic guitars down for this, like, Madonna cover song. (laughs) Oh, sick, yeah. And then I mixed it, but I wouldn't be surprised if it comes back in another iteration or I do a different one. It It just wasn't quite getting there, like, with what I wanted. Like, I can tell. I need to get hooked on the recording, like, in the first day, you know? Yeah. The same thing happened with this uh, something going on song. I didn't like it at first. I was like, you can't get the drums. I just, okay, I'm not going to get this good. And then I was like, no, oh, fuck it. Just try try something else. So I tried something else and I laid down the guitar and it sounded sick. And I was like, all right, I can go from here. Screw it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And, and, and so for for all the listeners um, and, and viewers and whatnot, the other song you did was We Belong. Uh, with 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 Brian Dellinger and and his sister, um, uh, the harmonies on that were just fucking sick. I, you you guys have like, you guys sound really good together. The harmonies were all me. How about oh! that? <laughs> so check this out. Because I've heard Brian sing before, like on on Instagram and, and, so and whatnot. He like sings, he's good too. 
Yeah, so he's singing, <laughs> he's, he's singing the verses, right? All the verses are him. Okay. And then, and then the chorus, so that's all Brian in the verse. And then the chorus is me and his sister singing the lead together, and then I sing all the harmonies behind her. That's so, fucking sick, man. Yeah, um, because I had just, I had already had all the choruses done before I took it over to them, and I need the verses done. And then I had Chels to sing the chorus with me, you know? Like, here, let's just, let's just do this part together. And I had already done it, so there's the two leads, and then the harmonies were already there. And it just sounded sick. Chelsea and I sang together because she was in Kirkwood Dellinger for a while. And mm -hmm. she sang our most, probably our most popular song was this one I did called New Juice. And her and I wrote it and her and I sang it together. So we've like, I've always loved my, Bruno, get the hell out of there, man. Come on, dude. <laughs> he's, his whole time he's been bad. He's been under my bed. He's uh, <laughs> now he's trying to get into my backpack. He's, try, he's just running through everything. He knows that I'm preoccupied. Oh man, he's making the cutest face. I mean, I'm gonna you, bring... you, you like just adopted him recently, right? Yeah, so I've had him around for quite a while because he was being fostered. He's been around for about, geez, eight months now, actually. Yeah. But he just got adopted within like the last month. He's, dude, he rules. Um, he's like incontinent because when he was like a little baby, he got his like back legs broken and his spine and he's all totally healed now, but he can't like pee or poop on his own. So I have to express his bladder for him. So I have to like reach up <laughs> under his ribs and press on him and press on his bladder and sprays pee all over the place. And, um, I get, this animal pisses on my hands every day. Uh, and that's, that's love, man. That's love. <laughs> I love that little fucker. I love Kawhi. She's such a good dog, my other dog. And then this little bastard, she loves him too. That was why I kept him. I was like, I could tell. Like, she doesn't care about other dogs. She's friendly with them. She's super like good natured animal, but she doesn't really need them around. But man, I could tell. Like, she abides his nonsense in a way that like I never thought she would. Like, it's insane. Like, and she like when he would like leave. And go back to Georgine's place and then come back here at first when he was going back and forth. When he would come back, Kawhi would just trip out. So that's why I kept him. I digress. There was something I was talking about before he interrupted me. Do you <laughs> remember? Uh, we were talking about... Um, uh, oh, just... Yeah, what, what, what were you going to say? Did you just have it? Nope. Oh, okay. Um, I, I, I think we were still talking about um, uh, Chelsea playing in Kirkwood Dellinger... Oh, yeah, we sang a song together. I liked it. I liked our voices. We did that. Mm, I can't remember where we were after that, but yeah, I liked our, yeah that was but, that's um, pretty good, though. But something I did want to circle back to was uh, just, you know, talking about recording on the iPhone and stuff. Um, so King Gizzard actually does a lot of iPhone recording with, with like, their oh, full sick. albums. Uh, so, like, their first, uh, their first full-length record, which was, like, the super garagey uh, record called 12 Bar Brews, um, it was, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's silly as hell, but, um, uh, that was recorded using like, I think five different iPhones. They, they played it live. Like the, you know, the, the phones were just record or were just set up like different parts of the studio. Um, and then with some of their newest, their, like one of their newest singles, uh, Honey, that's, I think their full album's coming out either, uh, later this month or next month or something. Um, but that was recorded or some of the guitar parts were recorded on, uh, on the iPhone. Sick. Um, it, specifically because, um, the iPhone just has that kind of like, like, like shitty sound, but it's like also like captivating because it like using, uh, using Stu McKenzie's words, it has like a cutting sound, um, that just kind of like cuts through so you can actually hear it clearly. Yeah. Um, I fucking love it. I think it sounds cool as shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and like, you know, I, I recorded um, like a, a little EP, a three song EP of my own, you know, about six months ago. That was, oh. uh, um, I, I mean, I, I sent it to you and your heart reacted. I don't know if you actually listened, but uh, <laughs> I, I listen to it every day. In fact, I have a confession to make to you. It's been on my love making playlist for a while. And uh Honestly, I only make love to myself, so take that as you will. Uh, well, I, I think you just uh, up 
You, you want up to your pre previously best compliment. Uh, <laughs> the only other, when, when I get off, the only other voice in the room is yours. But, but I was, so I did listen to that. Actually, I would, I would love to tell you right now that I hadn't, I would love for that to be the case, but I did listen to it and it's surprisingly good. I remember the first time I saw you play guitar, I was almost a little annoyed because you were better than I thought you'd be. I was like, what you little rat. I was like, <laughs> Oh, because I, it was compelling in a way. Good on you, boy. I appreciate it, man. Um, You're welcome. And, uh, but, but, you know, I wasn't necessarily fishing for a compliment, maybe a little bit, but, um, the, uh, but but just the process of of like recording into GarageBand on the iPhone, um, it was such a fucking process. Uh, just because that's the only recording software that I have, and it's and, and like also the only mixing software I have. Um, right. So I had to like you know pinch really uh, you know like go super in depth like on on the iPhone. Like it took hours of just like super uh, just tedious. It was such a tedious process trying to like master oh, yeah. everything or, or mix everything. Obviously, you can only master however much you can with GarageBand. But right, um, uh, yeah, that I, I was just like, I, if I'm gonna do anything like this again, I need to get like an actual board and then like an actual, <laughs> uh, you know, Pro Tools or something. Um, yeah, it's it's an undertaking. I spent a lot of time on both these songs, particularly this last one, because I just like. I like to go crazy and I kind of like doing like, even if there's an easier way that I could like expedite shit from point A to point B, I like to go in there and manually do all the crap. I like to do like every little thing in there. Like say I want like an effect somewhere. It's like, I'm going to go slice out a piece of the vocal copy and toss it on its own stupid track. Just like whatever. Like I got bad. I bet I can find easier ways to do crap. But man, a screenshot one of my songs for you it's just ridiculous how many little things there are but i just get like obsessive about it yeah i spend hours and hours and hours i've been making myself do like eight to twelve hours a day of recording shit on the phone it's just tedious man but like you get it like yeah i, I mean like, I, like I, uh, once you get once you get yourself in like a zone you yeah, know it's, it's, awesome. it's just like you need it's just like all right you got to just power through because you, right. you, you take one break from that and like it's going to be six months before you come back to it <laughs> yeah so oh totally because like and the other night i spent eight hours working on this song and i just finished up all the music and all my vocal parts i was actually going to have chelsea and brian sing on this most recent cover song <laughs> mm -hmm. but i just was like realized i'd sat on it for about a week and i was like oh man, I haven't had them do that yet. I was like, screw it. I'm just going to do it myself. So then that required like a few more hours because I tracked it pretty quick and it was easy, but then I wanted to like make everything like with the harmonies and the effects and all the dumb crap so I spent there. But I love just like spending hours on a song and then when I'm done, I'll just be like, okay, I'm going to do a little quick project, like maybe a minute and a half, a two minute little piece of music. But the other night I did it, I've been working on this track. And I just busted out, got the guitar, recorded these three electric parts, put an acoustic part, programmed some drums, and then spent, then sampled the guitar to make bass tones, which are really creepy and cool and like creaky sounding and made this really pretty little thing. I'll send it to you. Probably going to make it into a real song, but it's like, it's really cool. Like, but my brain was just like, you know, and it's just like, cool. Like, let's just use this because right now, we're like all powered up. You know what I mean? It's at that perfect point where I'm not burnt out yet. I'm just like in go mode. And I love that. And I end up coming up with really cool crap just like that. And I love it. Dude, that, that's, it's like one of the best feelings in the world. Like just, I mean, just when you find yourself in like such a creative flow, um, you know, j just where it feels like, fuck, I can just manifest fucking anything. Like it's, it, it's so weird. I mean, you know, for me, it's only like that, like, a couple days out of each month but when i hit that flow it's just fucking sick uh because it's just like all like the 28 other days of just stagnation are finally paying off it's <laughs> i actually don't <laughs> i don't believe that though you're uh 
you're like yeah. one of those good hyper people. You actually do things. I saw that you were, I saw you were doing comedy in Prescott, Arizona. Dude, Prescott is fucking gorgeous. Uh, Isn't it funny that it's called Prescott too, but it's spelled Prescott? Yeah, I, and, and thank God I, I learned the right pronunciation about a half hour before I got on stage. It was some random guy. And uh, I just opened up. I was like, hello, Prescott. And I was like, you guys like how I know the pronunciation of your weird town? So <laughs> th thanks to that random guy outside. And then we're off to the races. It was a, it, it was a great show. And, um, and the, yeah, the Prescott Comedy Club, just a shout out to them real quick. Uh, brand new operation. They've only been around for a couple months. But, um, I mean, it like I was treated like fucking royalty there. It was wild. And I'm just like an opener <laughs> for my friend. Um, Places should treat the people that are going there to perform well, right? Yeah. It makes for a better performance. If you're in a good mood, if you're comfortable. The, all the way around. Dude, it's, it's like such a mutually beneficial thing. You do like, better. They do better. The audience feels that. Everybody does better, man. There's like some real hippie shit to that that's so legit. It's not even hippie shit, but I mean, it is, but it isn't. Like, it's, it's just positive energy is real crap. Like, dude negativity sucks when the club is being lame you just like fuck these people right you know what i mean like and you got to be professional enough not to let it ruin your shit and that's easy but when they're being cool it actually enhances things you know what i mean yeah yeah it's it's fucking awesome well that's really cool i'll press gets a cute little place so you had a good show there and you really enjoyed the staff and the <laughs> operation at the press kit comedy um <laughs> yeah comedy club it's uh i mean it, it's a really small room it's like 25 people capacity but well, it was, dude, that's uh, the, those are the best comedy rooms 100 percent. that's the evil shit dude i saw kurt metzger in a tiny little room and they fucking made boyer and i set up front <laughs> like, i was like oh sick dude i hope kurt metzger makes fun of me it's one of my favorite comics but um boyer you know, if you've met him, he's not so much into that. That was, it was awesome. Oh, um, is, is he not? Cause like, like I barely know Boyer. All I know about Boyer is, is that he helps you clean up my puke when I, uh, <laughs> when the last time I've ever, I will ever take a dab. Uh, <laughs> let me, let me, let me correct you there. So he didn't help. I did it all. <laughs> I couldn't let him. What, what he, <laughs> he did facilitate your puking in front of people though. Um, no, he's, he's, um, He's a modest dude. Me, I go dance around on stage for money. He is a chill guy. So getting put up front of the comedy show where you're going to be made fun of in front of people. He also has a really good sense of humor about himself, but it's just like, holy shit, we're stoned. You know, it's like, yeah. oh, really? <laughs> so luckily he only made fun of us once. There was some other dude there. He was there by himself. And he referred to us as these three guys look like they made a bet to see who could lose their virginity this summer. It's <laughs> so like a few years ago. That's a bunch of us guys. We're like already in our mid thirties back then. <laughs> or, or no, maybe like early thirties, whatever. So it's just pretty fucking awesome. I oh, loved that, it. That, and then the guy, then the guy next to us got so drunk. He accidentally paid for me and Boyer's drinks too. And we just, we just ski daddled. I was like, I hope Boyer doesn't have a conscience tonight. Usually he does, but for some reason he was feeling wily enough to let me get. I'll, I'll, I'll shoulder this one. He's a good guy. I wouldn't want to find him in any ill repute. But I can say for myself, I was more than willing to let this uh, schmuck shoulder my beverage expenditure. So. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean that, that's that's what drunk idiots are there for, right? It's it's like. Presumably, at some point, they will buy you a shot, at least inadvertently. It, uh, <laughs> right. They, they serve their the circle of life. <laughs> right? It is very natural. It's, it's only natural. It's like, oh, well, you know, I, you really opened my eyes up to that. Now, I'm never going to, and, and there I am to take advantage of the circumstance, fulfilling my role. Yeah. I mean, like, like, like that seems so much, I feel so much better. I think <laughs> at the exact moment this conversation kicked, the about 40 hits of marijuana I had finally started to get, this is good ass weed till I'm just drinking heavy ass coffee. And I mean, I was stoned from the very first hit, but now I'm stoned. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I honestly can never tell. Uh, 
<laughs> you can't tell, right? You've been around me both, and it's the same. I'm well, not- I mean, dude, I mean, like, like you know, I, I've actually recently had to take a big step back from weed just because, like, it, it, you know, sometimes you got to do it. But, I mean, I mean, like, my last year working in New York, um, you know, in the office job, uh, the company that will remain unnamed, um, I mean, like, I was showing up to work does stoned it, does most it of rhyme, the days. Does it rhyme with slops? It does rhyme with slops. Uh, <laughs> then perhaps that would be a better name for it. But um, uh, in, in, in any case, uh, yeah, slops with two Ps. Um, but <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I mean, like, like I was show, I was showing up for work stoned like every single day. Do for like the better part of the last year I was there, and nobody could tell the difference. Um, which I think is a matter of not so much like me being able to pass it off, but uh mostly just their lack of perceptiveness but uh um yeah and anyway uh so so now little johnny hanford has to take a step back from the marijuana oh god i can't handle this whoa that's what i can do no i'm just kidding you're (laughs) free are you still do that other stuff that makes your head fucking soupy Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, I mean, this is fucking wild. I I, I took acid uh, about three weeks ago. Um, oh, and, sick, and, dude. It's the weirdest thing. Like whenever I whenever I trip, like weird shit always happens that has nothing to do with the trip. Like just well, like, whenever I trip, weird shit happens. Well, I mean, like I, I like I, I run into people. I run into like the zaniest characters. Like, dude, like no, 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 no. Uh, psychedelics they like facilitate far out shit man same i get yeah. it it's just who knows why it draws that shit to you man i right? mean like, like i went to uh um the uh, the 10 year uh the the 10 year celebration for mexican summer records in brooklyn and uh like i got off the bus and then i see gibby haynes just unload <laughs> like unloading his his car and i'm just like i'm pretty sure that's gibby haynes and i'm just like you know peak trip um so I, I didn't, you know, say anything or approach him, but like, like, you know, we, we've, we've had encounters, uh, you know, through, through you guys. Um, and, yeah, uh, I mean, and that's how I know who he is, but, um, <laughs> or at least, you know, what, what he looks like. Um, right, right, right. It, it's just weird shit like that. But, uh, I mean, yeah, three weeks ago, like I decided to go out for a walk, uh, and just the neighborhood meth dealer pulled up beside me and decided to start talking to me about his, uh, his mega church. I mean, it was just the most, <laughs> most bizarre shit Fucking in the world. Awesome. I mean, <laughs> and he was telling me about his, uh, uh, I mean, he was starting to talk about like, like Trump and politics. And I'm just like, I have, how did I end up here? Um, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. It, 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 so so, so, so like, like I let him go and then I, I circled back to my place because he put me in a bad headspace. And then I ran into another neighbor of mine who's just, she's just walking around. She's taking her dog for a walk with a whole bunch of spider plants in her hand. And she's just like, do you like plants? And I'm just like, I love plants. <laughs> and, and so she just gave me like, like the, the, this like spider plant vine. And I'm just like, I guess I'll carry it. It was. <laughs> dude, that's fucking sick, man. Dude, it, it's, it's, it's fucking bananas. Yeah. Dude, that's um, like perf. That's perfect for that kind of thing. Actually. Just thinking of it right now, I'm like thinking about tripping and I'm thinking about having a plant to carry around and the smell of a plant and the dirt that it's probably in. And like, that just would be fucking far out. Yeah, I Sorry, will say that the spider tripping, plant kind you're of- tripping me out, John. You're <laughs> tripping me out, bro. No, it's, it, it, dude, it, I'm, that's what I'm here for. I mean, like, you know, this whole podcast is a pretty trippy thing. Um, or maybe it's not now that I said it, but- um, but I mean, the, the spider plant was a little weird to carry around because I, you know, she said spider plant, so I wasn't entirely sure that it wasn't part spider. So it was <laughs> like it was uh, <laughs> it, it, it was a little weird. I would I would recommend you know like like maybe carrying around like a little uh, aloe vera plant or uh, uh, or a dracaena, dracaena, <laughs> like <laughs> something like that. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> um but uh but yeah you You know know what it's right where i'm sitting i'm looking i'm looking that direction there's a shelf and in that shelf there's a vial about this tall right Mm -hmm. and it's about three quarters full of um lsd 
Very, very cool. Um, if I, yeah, if I, if I, I can say that it's just hearsay. Yeah. If, yeah. I, if it wasn't exactly what it was, I'd go get it and show it to you right now. But you know me well enough to know that I'm probably not yanking your dick. <laughs> <laughs> that's that, I, I like that idiom that's that's good uh <laughs> but um yeah i mean you i know, also so, got some some of these too some some boomers <laughs> oh very cool dude yeah. uh, it's been I, a minute I, like, since i've tripped it's been a minute since i've tripped but i like you know stacked I mean, up yeah i mean i i think after after the last trip and just like you know, having having that series of encounters with the with the meth dealer, spider plant lady, and 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 also my new neighbor decided to come over and introduce himself uh, just that afternoon, and and like he offered to make me dinner. It it was the weirdest thing, and of course I accepted. Um, but th oh, that's like he, extra twisted, dude. It's so twisted because I actually that was that was probably the best part of the story. Like, because <laughs> he he comes over, he's just like, hi, my name's Alan. Um, you know, I've got the barbecue going. Would you like some barbecue chicken or something? And I was like, oh, well, you know, actually, I'm pescatarian. I, I'm, I'm that guy now. But, uh, but he was like, <laughs> oh, well, I'll cook, it. I'll cook up some Brussels sprouts for you. And he put, like, the perfect fucking spices on these. I grilled them up perfectly. Uh, he brought them over, um, like, about an hour later, uh, along with a whole bunch of, uh, like, southwestern chili peppers that, that he had, like, just fried up on, on the grill. And, and like he'd, he had frozen them. And he was just like, you know, just put these in, in your omelet in the morning. Uh, they're really tasty. You know, my, my wife and I were obsessed with, with New Mexico and, and New Mexico culture. And I'm just like, that's really cool, actually. <laughs> and, and he invited me to come over and watch him uh, cook up some chili peppers. Because, like, I, I told him, you know, look, I don't know if I'm going to be able to actually eat the food because I'm on acid at the moment. Um, but So how, how, at what point did he try to fuck you? <laughs> Dude, it's coming. It's, if that's not coming, then this is fucked. Or I, I mean, I think he's... only. Listen, hold on. I'm gonna tell you real quick. There can only be for me two variables here. Either he tried to fuck you, or this story ends with you killing him and his wife. Don't fucking let me down. I did your podcast. I'm trying my best to not be a total asswipe this whole time. I have been smoking weed and staring at my dog and drinking coffee and being ridiculous, but. For fucking Christ's sakes, man, do not leave me hanging with it. Either he tried to fuck you or you killed him and his wife. I mean, he, that's, he, like, he, that's, like, that's, like, that's like, I just been watching true crime shit on YouTube and while all through Montana, Georgina and I listen to a true crime podcast and shit like that. And I, I need this to be sexual or violent or both. Um, I, I mean, like, like, sure. I, I, I would say he had like a really apathetic fuck me in his eyes. Uh, it was, <laughs> I mean, because clearly he's he's a bottom. He, he's definitely like, like, like at best a power bottom. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> oh God! Fuck yeah! Oh my God! Oh Jesus! <laughs> that, honey, that that that's like a fucking warm fucking washcloth bathing my fucking bathing the filth off of me. I feel so clean now after that. I feel like cathartic. I'm off the hook. You have no idea the real the relief I'm feeling right now. That's, that, that's, that's cathartic. I don't even care what happened with Alan or whatever the fuck his name was anymore. The truth that was all I needed. Just truth is much like all things very personal and you know me centric sort of thing me being everybody you as well whatever yeah but i'm living my truth and that's it, I, it mine goes a little further you definitely killed that guy but <laughs> <laughs> i don't I, I think he's out and about he's probably running errands but um uh <laughs> Uh, you seem to know a lot about what he does, so you're well, planning the, to kill him. The, the, the re well, I mean, you know, because like, like I live in a in like a, a duplex uh, complex. So like, there's a couple duplexes, and um, uh, I've been like trying to find. I, I, I'm waiting for when he comes home because uh, not not because I'm gonna kill him, but like when <laughs> I was in Prescott, um, like I, I was just in one of these uh, one of these shops, and I saw these socks uh, that had 
like there's this pair of socks that I was like, I need to get these for Alan. Just it's a nice thing. Uh, it, it had um, it had, just has chili peppers on them, and uh, and then one big chili pepper that's made to look like Willie Nelson, and it says Chili Nelson. It's it's corny as fuck, but I'm just like I I gotta get gotta get them for him. No, did, did I did I just do a hard 180 and just lose you right there? No, not at all. Actually, <laughs> it's just so pathetically wholesome. <laughs> I'm just like blown away. It's just like, God damn. It's like, it's just, I can't even tell whether I hate it or love it. So, dude, I'm I couldn't kinda, tell either. Kinda, uh, I know. I know. It's busy. Even the way you delivered it was just like, ominous in a way it was weird it was like foreboding trumpets with a lot of reverb on them shooting through the fucking heavens i'm like where do i stand on this right now <laughs> i was like I, I don't mean, even know i don't even know how to feel and i'm real stoned now and i'm thinking about like no i'm not i'm not <laughs> I'm, I'm holding back i'm holding back that that's it that's a yeah, fuck that why, why, why hold back you're talking to me i you, there's no reason to hold back that was a lie. I lost it and uh, realized that I drifted down the stream. Um, I could make something up, though, but it wouldn't be natural. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm making all this up, obviously. <laughs> Dude, I mean, it, it, it's fucking fun as hell to riff with you. Like, like I, I swear, if it weren't for, you know, you being like a great musician and artist, like, I would think you should probably do stand up. But um, then again, maybe that's kind of an oversaturated market. I don't know. Um, I don't know what I'm doing with with you know, with my career, I'm just hoping that it all works out one way or another, but, um, well, you're uh, doing stuff. I mean, dude, the biggest part of, you already know this and we, everybody knows this, but like, if you're not doing shit, you're not doing shit, nothing ever happens. And like, what do you consider success? You know, there's obviously different kinds. It means different things, different people. And like, is it monetary? Is it, but like, you're actually doing shit. That's fucking cool. Right. Oh, dude, like, totally. I, I just want to, like, like, like I, I don't know that I want, like, you know, some grandiose monetary success. I just want to be able to, like, make a living uh, doing it. So, yeah. you know, if, if that means I'm still, you know, just, like, paying uh, or just, like, living in, in, like, a cheap place for the rest of my life, whatever. Because, uh, like, this is, like, the legit, legitimately the happiest I've ever been, which seems pretty bizarre because, like, we're in the middle of a pandemic where people are just, like, dropping like flies you know with, with, with like their mental health and shit and it's and here i am thriving it's it's weird um yeah well that's isn't that but i mean yeah it, it, it is good to dance on the graves of others is what you're saying and i couldn't agree more <laughs> <laughs> um but uh, i i also like to get in my car and drive around and find homeless people and point at them and laugh I like to take food and throw it out the window and drive over it so it's ruined. And I say, that'll learn you, you fucking do good half not. And I cackle and I it cackle off as I spill off into the night. I uh that's bullshit. <laughs> Obviously, no, that was a, it was a mean, horrible joke I just told and God am I sorry. I actually huge, huge supporter of homeless people. I wanna lift them up and kiss their sweet napes. I mean, I think there's a healthy uh, middle ground, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> I I operate in extremes, <laughs> D dude. It, yeah, same. it's that it's... thing I just said. I stole I stole that basically that concept from a John Waters movie. I think it's from maybe it's from Polyester or something. But this is one thing seen in the movie where they're like, I like to drive around and laugh at poor people from their expensive car it's like some little like thing someone says in the movie so i couldn't quite remember it so i just kind of stole it but yeah I, st I stole it i'm 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 not very funny i just i steal a lot and talk about myself constantly and i i, I mean I, I that basically is what what comedy is it's it, like like it's a lot of subconscious theft um, you know, or, or like, and, and, you know, so the word for that, I, I guess is derivative, but it's, there, there's nothing wrong with being derivative, you know, like, uh, I mean, you know, for example, like your, your guitar solos on, uh, um, on, on your latest thing that I keep forgetting the, the title of, cause it's long. Um, that, that's, der that's a little derivative of the meat puppets, you know? Uh, oh yeah. So, I actually sent it, I, I sent it to Derek Bostrom and I told him, 
The guitar solo is called Play Like Daddy So The Fans Will Enjoy This Shit More. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you and Derek seem to have like a, a similar, uh, be on a similar wavelength humor-wise. Very dry. Derek is fucking magical. So, okay, I grew up with Bostrom. But, you know, he hasn't been around since I was a kid because, you know, he was out of the band. I, I didn't see him, like, but maybe once that whole time. And when he came back around, I spent so much time with my dad and uncle as an adult now. The band thing it was weird because it was, like, the missing piece of, like, all their humor and all the art and all the music. And it was just, like, whoa, fucking bizarre. And you see how much of Kurt and Chris comes from Derek and vice versa. He's, like, the other guy that like are this anomaly of people. They're all so fucking smart, the three of them, and like so creative and so artistic. And uh, Bostrom is amazingly fucking hilarious, you know. There's, those yeah. other guys are too, but he's like the other part of that. And it's fucking like, whoa. And it's what? kind of funny because he knew me when I was a little kid, and then he knows me again as an adult, but we get along so well, which is easy because he's an affable fella. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I am... Uh, sometimes that as well <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you know it's uh, like i definitely noticed that with uh with boston rejoining the band because like um i mean it definitely seems like you know your dad and uncle they've they're they're a wild pair and it's like you've got to have that other party there to kind of tame the 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 hijinks i guess or, or like like at least play off of it um i mean because yeah i mean Bostrom adds like a, a totally different artistic style to the, you know, to the meat puppets. Like, uh, I mean, he, he did, he did the, uh, the cover art for Mirage, right? Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. He did, a, he did, I mean, a ton of that shit is his. I mean, in the beginning he wrote a lot of the lyrics and he was almost probably like the facilitator of a lot of wiliness back then too. But now, yes, he does get to, play straight man from time to time but that is i presume as real it is is it's also well i can't speak on that he is a fucking freak though from that's just a far out fucking dude it's yeah i don't know it's hard to say um he's a little miniature richard nixon faced um <laughs> mug having human being and he's darling as hell it's cute. It's funny. You kind of almost just want to baby him and hold him, swaddle him up and fucking tug at his cheeks. I don't know. <laughs> it's a fucking trip. He's a really musical drummer and he's fucking smart as hell. I really dig hanging out with people whose brains work and um, he likes to talk. He, he sometimes will pretend like he does it, but he's got a big mouth. So do I, though. Probably bigger than his. So yeah. I can't say anything, but I like it. I mean, all, all you guys are just like fun as hell to, to hang with. I mean, like, and again, like I, it, it's, it's the absolute craziest thing to me that any, any of this has even come to fruition. I mean, like, you know, it, yeah, I, I mean, me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, cause like, you know, prior, prior to King Gizzard's kind of taken over my life, like, uh, and I'm kind of glad that they have in a way, cause you know, I, I, I'm sure you know, you get enough people fanboying uh, over, over the meat puppets and shit. Like, um, but you know, they, they, like, you guys were my favorite band, like, for, for several years. And it was, uh, I mean, it was just such a cool thing to, to, like, see you guys for the first time in Indianapolis, like, seven years ago. And I remember uh, that. It's so weird. You were, I, if I would have known that this would be now, like, nearly a decade on, I'd have never fucking believed it. Cause you were just, like, a little kid. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I was 23. Like, I was just getting started in my baseball scouting career that lasted. I, like, re I remember. Longer than it should have. Uh, <laughs> that whole thing was bizarre. I was like, this kid is such a fucking dork. I was like, this is magically dorky. I was like, but there's some, like, there's some, like, endearing quality to it, but not really at the same time. I was like, it's actually just annoying. And I thought that, <laughs> but there was, I, but, but, I don't know, somehow. Somehow, after all these years, I still feel exactly the fucking same. You've done nothing to change that. <laughs> you know, that's okay. That's okay. I, 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 as long as it's, it's a sustainable model. That's what, that's what matters. It's sustainable as fuck. It works. <laughs> oh, man. 
No, it's a, it, it's a trip. It's funny. Yeah, uh, you, you stayed the good path and you like let the cooler parts of yourself prevail. And like cool is subjective, but I just mean like the open mindedness shit. It's good. It's fucking yeah. life is cool. And it is weird the way stuff goes. Like, you know what I mean? I meet a lot of people on tour and I've got friends from like, that I see in different cities and I love that stuff. It's different because you never get a chance to get fucking tired of these people because you don't have to see each other. You know what I mean? Like I can have like a handful of friends I actually see. Right. Like, but I don't, wouldn't want to be around me all the fucking time. I'm an asshole. And like, I wouldn't want to be around my friends constantly. Boring and I hang out quite a fucking bit. And then even then, I swear to God, I'm sure he's just putting up with me like 70% of the time. You know, Dellinger and I fit it in. Got a few other friends I hang out with a lot. But, and a lot is subjective for me too, because it's not a ton, but it's great meeting people that you actually like in such a weird capacity. And then you can see where that goes. And it's just interesting because it's, the people that you tend to end up liking in the beginning end up tending to do the cooler shit anyhow because there was something, right? When you meet people, there's like something about like people that you like. It's like they they do shit too. It's like there's cool, you know what I mean? It's a kind of a thing that like you don't even know it, but it's like the unspoken thing. Like whatever cool shit is, but like people that are open to like trying new shit, moving different places, like, you know, getting stuff happening, like pursuing arts, all that kind of stuff. Or what, what the fuck ever, you know what I mean? It doesn't even have to be that crap. It's just whatever the fuck you're going for. Like if you're doing shit and you're actively like doing stuff and that is, could be anything that could fuck. I mean, I don't even know, right? I can't label. I don't even know what it is for me, but it's neat to see that stuff. I'm done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Um, yeah, I mean that that's a I don't I don't have anything to add to that but uh <laughs> but but I I do want to say um uh you know what, during my during my trip a few weeks ago I did throw on Up on the Sun uh you know full album um and uh somehow it had never occurred to me until then mm -hmm. that that the song Away is just two chords the whole thing. Yeah. It's, it's just like the same the same two chords but it's just like it it jams so fucking hard. It's like it it, it was just fascinating. I I I don't know if like how you would you know expand on that, but it was just something I wanted to throw out there because I was gonna text you, and then I was like, you know what? Maybe maybe don't text people while you're on acid, like because it it usually doesn't end well. It it, it um yeah, it's two fucking chords back and forth, and they're only a step apart. It's mm -hmm. just like a one, two progression. Like what the fuck dude. And it's cool as shit. Yeah. I, I think so when I, I remember I didn't love that song when I was younger, but the older I got, I really started to like it a lot. Like I hear it and I'd be like, Oh, this is so catchy. Like it just has such a great vibe to it. And I know it's two fucking chords. I've we've jam we jam it sometimes. It sucks. Yeah. So fun. It's just Chris, Derek and I will jam it out. And like, we just get to play all that like funky shit. It's so fun. I'm like, Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean it, like, like like have you jammed jammed on that at all with uh with ron it's like i i because i, I like remember. i'm just trying to picture what that would sound like like what what would ron do with that because that guy is just out of this world um, <laughs> is it, is he far out dude yeah. i mean like like i remember he he showed up to one of your um one of your gigs at the brooklyn bowl i think it was like 2016 and um uh and you're just like, dude, see that guy right there? Like, he's a fucking genius, like keyboardist, <laughs> you know, a a everything. And then, you know, once I saw that he actually uh, joined the Meat Puppets full time, I, uh, I I looked him up on Spotify just for like, to see the other shit that he's done. It's out there and it fucking grooves. Oh, dude. He he does a lot of really cool stuff. He just, it, it's nuts. The jazz shit. The classical stuff, the neoclassical, neo jazz, the whatever. Like he's fucking nuts, dude. He's different. Um, I've never had like I get to play with a lot of cool people, and if he's like on you know the upper level of far out like that, like with being like ability wise and yeah. knowledge of music and stuff. He's a blast. He's really smart musically. Yeah, I love playing with that dude. And he's cool as shit too. He's a freak, man. He's a fucking weirdo. I love it. Yeah, so, yeah. He's a good guy. Yeah, he's a solid. He's a very solid person. He's like a 
you know, this whimsical, coy little thing at times. And then it's like Professor Robot at other times. He's a fucking weirdo. He's exceedingly intelligent. It's a trip, man. He's just like, oh, it's just like little Nosferatu fucking riffraff from Rocky Horror Picture Show looking motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so so is, is that how he got his nickname as, as the vampire? Uh, or is that even know. his official nickname or is that just like yeah, just yeah, how you caption much. Instagram photos? No, I mean, we call him the vampire. Him here. I don't <laughs> just yeah. look at him. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, I see, I see it. it, 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 it is there. Mean, that's, I swear, <laughs> fucking, he used to come around with his brother Brian and they'd show up at shows. And his brother Brian is even more pale than he is. He's like, he's more elfish How? looking. I, dude, it's fucking, <laughs> he, he's like, we're talking like near albino. And oh, I, I, I used to call him the, 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 uh, the Norwegian death metal brothers. <laughs> they'd always come wearing like long black, they'd like long black, it'd be like winter or something. And they'd have like long black coats on and I'd be like the death metal brothers. And I'd seen them around for a while. And then Ron gave us um, a CD. And I remember we popped it on and I remember where we were. We were like in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And we were listening to it. And I was like, wait, this is that dude. <laughs> like what the fuck? It was insane. It was just like solo stuff. I see him playing piano and it was amazing. So, and then he came out to jam with Chris and Phoenix. He used to come out and jam with Chris and Phoenix starting probably in 2013 or 14. It's been mm -hmm. years. And uh, I'd go over there every once in a while and jam with him too, but not a lot. But Chris and him jammed a shitload. He'd come out and visit. And then, um, Boy, what happened? I don't really remember how it all went down. Then all of a sudden he was just, he played a show with us kind of like on the fly. Like he was going to come up and jam with us, I guess. But instead he kind of ended up playing the whole show. Like one of our Phoenix shows, our Black Friday shows. And then came out and played a couple more shows with us or one more show in California after that. And then, like me, and I can't remember if that was before or after He'd gone out and stayed with Kurt for a while and started jamming with him out in Austin. So Chris had had this like master plan to get Ron in the band for years. And I'd always be like, dude, you're an idiot. That's a terrible idea. And I really thought that too. I was like, how the hell would that even work? You're stupid. Cause I like to, you know, go, I like to fuck with Chris, my uncle a lot. Oh yeah. And, I've noticed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so but and I did think it was a bad idea, and then somewhere in the Kurt thought it was a good idea, so he like had Ron come out, and then and then it was Kurt's idea. <laughs> Ron was in the band. Yeah. I, I, well, nobody. It, I, my my pops is a magician with that shit because it's just like. But it's true though. It's like you know he never considered it until he did, and it doesn't matter because he would have eventually anyhow. So my uncle gets what he ultimately wants then we get to deny him the credit so <laughs> well because because your uncle did play keyboards right on uh uh sewn together um did album he? from like 10 years ago i i, I think so at least a, i read it somewhere maybe it's just wikipedia or something but there were some really oh. cool keyboard parts uh on that album and obviously like i know you guys don't really play stuff off of that uh too much you know other than like monkey and the snake maybe but um <clears throat> There's piano stuff with it definitely wasn't him. Maybe he did some keys. I can't remember. Yeah. I was there. I was there. Um, I just can't remember. Maybe he did. Yeah. But, well, in, in any case, I, it, it was it was just fascinating to me. And I because like I remember after listening to that record, I was like, wait, this what, what they should get like a keyboardist maybe. And then of course me be, being like that audacious fuck I am, I was saying like. I should tell them about my cousin. Because, uh, like, like my, my, my cousin, uh, Jesse Whiteley, he's a, you know, Toronto-based musician. Um, uh, he's mostly, like, a blues and jazz uh, uh, ham and B3 guy. Um, but, uh, I mean, he's... That's, that's sick, though. Oh, I, I mean, he, he does, like, uh, a lot of, like, you know, standards, and, um, and he plays with, like, the Toronto big band. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, so obviously, like, it, it's something that I like, I don't think you guys would actually mesh at all, but it's uh but you know, I was thinking like, they, I could see keep keyboard working out with, with me puppets. Like, cause you know, you guys take so many different directions. Like you have such an, an eclectic, uh, you know, like a variety of sounds 
which I think is like that's kind of the same reason that I like King Gizzard so much because like they're just all over the place with like they've got acoustic jazz uh fucking speed metal I mean it, it's like they do it all and 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 I just love that kind of versatility we um this is in the same vein of that I do love that stuff and it's cool to get to stretch out Ron knows this guy who plays with like I can't remember who the fuck it was. Something hilarious like Michael Buble or something or some shit like that. But he was in Europe at the same time we were. And we were in uh, Belfast in Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm. And um, this dude came and he jammed with us. It's like a sax player, like an alto sax player, some shit like that on the, that song of The Great Awakening off the new album. And he had such a different like kind of thing. I actually really liked what he did. It was a little schmaltzy in a way, but like it was super pretty and the sounds he got. This venue was this old church with all this ornate oh. shit and stuff. And it's like Northern Ireland. So it's kind of like steeped in the weird ghosts of their rocky political and, you know, past and just all that weird religious shit. And it's just like really cool place though. It's fucking yeah. awesome, dude. I went walking around and I was smoking a joint and it started to rain. So I had to like hide, you know, under this fucking awnings outside of this shop and it was beautiful though because the rain kept going away and the sun would crack out and there'd be like rainbows and shit it's like i'm stoned as fuck i've never been here before everyone's got bitching accents like beautiful and it's like you know for so many of us cracker motherfuckers it's like this is the motherland <laughs> yeah. ireland you know what i mean like <laughs> kurt's yeah. grandma kurt's grandma katie was irish and um you know, all that stuff going over there. I mean, I'm very cracker assed for the most part. You know what I mean? I got a little bit of the chosen in me like you. <laughs> little, I'm, I'm not as chosen as you. You. It's very chosen. Me just a little Way bit. Way chosen, yeah. Very little bit chosen, but still touched. Micro chosen. Uh, <laughs> but, um. Hey, micro dosing <laughs> and micro chosen. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, but, uh. I mean, like, you know, I'm just thinking about that song, The Great Awakening, you know, played in that type of, of venue with a sax player. Like, I'm just imagining how that would sound. And like, it, it does sound kind beautiful. of like, like, yeah, beautiful. And just like, like in, in sort of a haunting way. Oh, yeah. Um, it was, it had ghost tones to it. It was, you know, it was cool. It was, it was a pretty moment, man. Cool. Yeah. Now, see, so you guys uh, toured Australia, like, um several years ago right mm -hmm. and and because and correct me if i'm wrong but uh didn't you tour with stonefield uh yeah but that was here stateside oh really yeah that oh okay Cal that was like uh we played with them in like california and like a west coast tour i can't remember where else we played with them we played with them in like a number of places though like and they're australian right yeah yeah well uh they're i mean yeah they're like four australian sisters um and the uh yep uh the the drummer lead singer she's engaged to the drummer of king gizzard um so like <laughs> dude like 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 they, they, so they all went on tour uh uh last year with uh like it was it was stonefield orb and king gizzard and it was just like the absolute coolest shit um and, and like, man, yeah, dude, we toured it, with them. They were, they were fun. They, uh, they, um, they were really tight. Yeah. It was awesome. Their vocals were sick. Yeah. That's I, what I, I liked about it. I mean, cause like, you know, we, we were hiking, uh, a, a couple <laughs> years ago and you, you told me about them and, um, and then like, I, you know, next day on the flight back to New York, I, uh, like I, I decided to, you know, listen to one of their albums. I was like, Oh fuck, these guys hit hard and they're, like, like it, it was, it was great. Um, and because you're a sexist, you couldn't believe that it was women. Yeah, good for you. You stopped yourself just in time, you sneaky motherfucker, <laughs> you rat. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you see, you're fucking, you, you know who you're fucking with here. <laughs> I'm, I'm not Jamie. I'm your conscience. <laughs> Do you get? Do you get? You know that reference, yeah. Uh, I, I'm I'm laughing as if I do. Uh, okay, it's Jamie Foxx destroying um comedian Doug Williams or whatever it is. You never seen that YouTube video? Oh shit, no. 
Oh my god. Oh dude, dude I, I love okay, Jamie Fox. On. Okay, so okay. It's at like a celebrity roast for uh Emmett Smith or some shit like that. And um like Jamie Foxx is the MC and Shaq's there and stuff and all of a sudden it's this comedian's turn to come up to start roasting and um he sucks. So Jamie Foxx starts interrupting him because he has like a mic right here, you know yeah. what I mean? So he keeps lifting it up and he's like He's like, am I fucking up right now? <laughs> he's, like, <laughs> he's like, it sure is getting hot in here. <laughs> oh, like, like, but but it's way, but that's not even the worst part. Like you'd have to see it. Like he just like, it's the, it's fucking amazing. It's, it, it's seriously like brilliant. Cause he just totally destroys this guy during his own set. It, and he keeps doing it. He keeps going. And he's like, I'm not Jamie. I'm your conscience. <laughs> He's like, I just told another joke that didn't go over very well. Oh it's my god! Like, you've never seen this? No, how have oh, I never dude. seen this? This it's, it's 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 my it is the reason that like because Jamie Foxx is already pretty impressive. Like honestly, like the music shit, the acting, like everything. Like, and then you see that like the stand up comedy is insane. Like he's fucking amazing. Like. That is what, like, truly, when I saw that, which was a long time ago, the first time I saw it, I was like, okay, now I'm, like, a fan for real. Because that's insane. Like, how, he's fucking evil. I love it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, like, because like, I'm only, you know, primarily a fan of Jamie Foxx because he once gave me a shot at Patron. Uh, <laughs> but, like, well, you know, because, like, you know, when I went to, uh, you know, back when I was working in baseball and, like, I went to the 2016 All-Star Game in San Diego, I got to go to the MLB Players Party. Um which uh, Jamie Foxx was hosting. And like, it, it, it was, I had no business being there. Like, like I, literally no business being there. I just heard about the party and then just like tagged along with some people who I knew would get in without getting questioned. And uh, uh, they didn't realize I was tagging along. So uh, it, it worked, but uh, yeah. So like I'm Again, down- Your audaciousness paid off. Always does. And- uh, <laughs> well, you're, the, 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 the audacity of Hanford. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. It, 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 I'm a magical dude. It's it's really weird to like, I don't know, realize it and like not get too full of myself, but also sort of. But like, uh, I guess like, like I was just dancing with like fucking major league all-stars uh, and, and like a whole bunch of prostitutes as it turned out to be. Uh, that was a whole scandal that like got a bunch of people fired from major league baseball. But uh, <laughs> anyway, I was dancing with them and uh, Jimmy Fox had like this whole tray of uh, Patron shots and I was like, I shouldn't. But then he was like, I got two shots left. And I was like, me. And he, he gave me one. And it was just the, it was a really cool moment that was shared uh, or, or that, that I experienced. And he was just like, all right, cool. Now there's one less shot. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or that beyond that, I, yeah, probably even less consideration than that. <laughs> Probably, probably, probably such indignation and on his end that he couldn't even muster an emotional or even like just, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Like emotional and just like the bare minimum of like feeling in regard to something. <laughs> it's probably like a, a null state of just void existence. And then <laughs> thank God it was over and it was back to being celebrity Jamie <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, you yeah, know, because I think that you perhaps are a soul vampire, and that his mojo was strong enough to ward off your evil. Uh, yeah, that's I, what I, that's that's what that story said to me. <laughs> you know, I I think that I think that hits that plays that that works. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, dude, I uh, like I, I think we'll wrap up soon. But um, is there anything? Before I let you go, is there anything that you've been sort of thinking about or, or working on that uh, that we haven't talked about that you think you want to you want to share? Like musically? Yeah, musically, artistically, whatever the fuck. Um, geez. Well, I'm gonna have a solo EP, and it probably will be done. At least re- I'll probably have all the songs recorded by the end of the year. I was like setting that for myself so that I actually do it. So that I'll do but it's not, it's not going to be more than four or five songs, but that'll be dope recorded on real stuff actually. Um, so it sounds a little bit better than my phone shit. 
not to disparage the phone shit, but Boyer and I just make really cool sounding recordings over at his little studio. So that's what we're going to do that. Aside from that, I want to start making short films with um, Brian Dellinger. Oh, we've, shit. Uh, we've already begun to write one. It's going to be fucking hilarious. It's stupid. It's like absurdist dumb shit, but it's about um, an assassin. He's the greatest assassin ever known to man. And then he comes back and finds out that his wife and family have been kidnapped. And um, <laughs> for real, it's going to be the <laughs> stupidest shit ever, dude. Um, I mean, are you guys going to... So who's going to play Liam Neeson? Well, me. But the thing is that it's going to be like this guy. He's like a white... He's like a ninja. And after spending nine months of solitude in the mountains, he comes back to take care of his family, which is his first priority in life. And uh, they're gone because he's been getting on for nine months. So they've been kidnapped, <laughs> thankfully, just a day or two before he comes the fuck out of the mountains, obviously. And then hijinks ensue. I want my buddy Ira to play the, like, the, you know, the, uh, the end boss. And, like... <laughs> He's going to, like, come out and, like, do this, like, swivelly hip dance with, like, a couple of guns. And that's going to be to entice me into our final battle. Uh, I'm just giving you some key points that are tasty morsels so that you'll be – your appetite's wet for what's to come. Honestly, I wish that more movie previews were just, like, the director – uh saying what's sort of happening like like because yeah. <laughs> like that's hilarious and, and like it's it's interesting it's intriguing and it's honestly way more or way less misleading than uh than any oh, way. theatrical this, preview yeah yeah this actually this i'm not yanking your chain or sending you any way that's gonna flip you somewhere else right at the end i mean i'm gonna tell you this a hot little piece of gossip the main character female uh will be called Joe Allison. And uh, <laughs> I, shh, I don't, that's just hot off the press, so. Fuck yeah, dude. I know. What the hell? Yeah. It's, just, I, it's like throwing, you know what they say, never lay pearl before swine, but here I go giving out all my hottest uh, artistic endeavor. <laughs> nah. Well, hey, man, thanks for having me on your podcast. Dude, thank you so much for coming on. I mean, th this, is, this is an absolute blast, and uh, I'm, I'm thrilled to hear about the EP and, and, and the movie as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm probably going to be, like, hitting up Phoenix a little more frequently now because, like, at least you guys are sort of open. Uh, California very much is not. Uh, <laughs> so Phoenix, uh, Phoenix, greater Phoenix area is good for comedy. Yeah. You know, people – People like, they'll come out here. It's fun. So you should come do comedy here. And then, um, you know, maybe one or two people will find you funny, which would be more than usual. Uh, you'd be surprised. I actually crushed the Tempe Improv back in February and you decided not that's, to show up. That's uh, <laughs> mind blowing. <laughs> I remember that night. I, I thought the best joke of all was the one I told, which was telling you I'd be there. <laughs> I'm just yeah. kidding. I, want, I wanted to come, but I can't remember the excuse I made to you, so I can't tell you why oh, I didn't make it. No, no, there was no excuse. You said that if you show up, you would be heckling, and I was actually kind of relieved that you didn't. Oh, shit, uh, yeah. But oh, also, but, but actually, I do kind of wish you showed up just to heckle everybody else because it was a bringer show. Uh, oh, so I like, get it. Oh, my God. I, I saw, like, like, usually bringer shows are, aren't all bad, but like, this one was absolutely brutal. Like, like there, there was like some frat boy from a uh, from ASU. He like just turned twenty, and he like he he brought like his entire fraternity, and it Oof. was so fucking br like it it was like nails on a on a chalkboard, um, on another chalkboard. Like it it was so <laughs> fucking bad. Um, but uh, yeah, so so like my friends left immediately after, after my set, there's like, we can't stay any longer. So yeah, uh, that's awful. Yeah, dude. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. And, um, I, I look forward to, to hearing all your new shit. Thanks buddy boy. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good one and enjoy all your future pursuits, endeavors, mishaps, failures, and, uh, which there will be many. And, um, just know that though I don't love you, I care for you enough to do you this favor.
<laughs> dude, no man I, thanks this was fun. i fucking Thank appreciate you. that man i yeah i'll talk to you soon thanks dude this has been a blast yeah hell yeah take it easy